Roll call, everyone is here. We need approval of the agenda. I think everyone has the agenda. Uh, one typo at the bottom, it said the adjourned regular quarterly meeting. This is a special meeting. So the number nine should just say special meeting on it, or I guess it's, it's number nine. It should be number seven. I'd like to make a motion for an addition to the agenda. Um, seeing this is a working meeting and there's been a lot of confusion in setting agendas and dates of meetings, I'd like to add as new business that we discuss the policies, procedures, and protocol of the Planning Commission concerning things um, like meeting dates, arrangements for public comments, setting the agenda, official communication process, other entities, roles and expectations, and decisions making. And I feel we're kind of unclear in that area, and it would save a lot of grief if we had that discussion. I second that. Moved and seconded. Uh, a rather lengthy motion. Um, a motion discussed policies, procedures, and protocols. Okay. Other discussion on that. Uh, we'll add that uh, right in front of uh, old business. We'll go ahead and discuss that before we get into the wind energy system. Is that fine? If we add it there? Yeah, we're okay. okay. Any other discussion on the amendment to the agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, now we need to approve the agenda as amended. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there support? I second that. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, discuss the policy and procedures. Um, Cindy, you want to go ahead and You guys will get used to maybe in the future. <laughs> um, so the meeting dates. We were meeting every two weeks, and then we were having too many meetings, and then we were meeting monthly, and then we were not getting anything done, and then we were told no extra meetings, that we would meet quarterly, and then we were told we need to be, meet monthly. And this all happened in less than six months. Um, so how do those decisions get made? Um, when are they decided? Is there a meeting where those are decided? So I guess I just looking for input, input or information. Uh, the way I understand it, we're about two special meetings a year. Things where it doesn't come up that often, <laughs> where we spend a whole year on one one ordinance. But uh, that's the way it used to be: just two special meetings and four quarterly meetings. It's always been that way. But they didn't do that. I I believe we we did talk about having more meetings, and then it changed. And it's like there's like a flip flop scenario going on. So I I have to agree with Cindy that we're kind of confused on really how we're going to proceed here. Well, we have quarterly meetings. Our next scheduled quarterly meeting will be October. We meet, uh, what is it, October, January, March, and July. Those are our quarterly meetings. I understand that, but the Ryan, was... you, Ryan, you got a comment? Yeah, I, I think uh, the discussion would be uh, benefited by uh, considering the uh, bylaws and rules, rules of procedure that the uh, Planning Commission has adopted that speak to some of these issues. Uh, with regard to the number of special meetings you have, there, there is no limit under any law as to the number of special meetings you may have. Now, the, the township for budgeting purposes may not want to pay for more than a certain number of special meetings. Right. That, that's a separate issue. But as to how they get scheduled, the bylaws provide that a special meeting may be called by the chairperson 
or any two commission members upon written request. So that is the procedure for any of the uh, special meeting uh, schedule. Either the chairperson can do it by himself or two members can request it. It doesn't need to be decided in an actual formal meeting at the planning commission. And I think the, you mentioned the budget. I think that's why the township only wanted two special meetings. We could have more special meetings, but the township would foot the bill for two, and if anybody else wanted special meetings after that, they were supposed to um, pony up the, the cost of the meeting, I think, to bring you as a general fact. This is not a normal situation. No, it's not. No, it's, not. it's not. And we were told early on that if we need more meetings, we could have. Right. And there, there's been a fortune spent in, well, we go um, a lot, a lot of extra expenses here. I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying, I, it has been confusing right. as to, are we going to meet, are we not going to meet? I don't find that confusing at all, because at the end of the night at our meeting, we decide this is the date it's going to be, and that's what it is. I don't know where the confusion is. Well, they wanted us to have extra, early on, I was told, that we could have as many meetings as it took. Right. So, I mean, if, if we're going to just do it quarterly, well, then it's going to run out for a lot longer period of time. And uh, from my memory, uh, back at the, um, I believe it was the July, either the July or August township board meeting, I said I was going to have a meeting August and September, and then we'd have our regular one in October. And I tried getting uh, consent from the members of the committee for August and there was a conflict so we canceled August and so now we're having tonight's meeting right tonight and and, fact, and, you, in fact, and, you, and you, you told me you said you're gonna get grief for that right canceling and I August. did and I said <laughs> I said I don't think you will and and I think I remember you saying Rick that um, we got the moratorium and we got more time now so it's no biggie to have special meetings I believe you said that. I did say that but still I think it's it's a lengthy process, right? So it, if we go back to just quarterly and do specials, that's if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. But it should just be clear that, that right. that's the way it is. Yeah. Right. I, I also to add, I, I never heard the fact that uh, two members can request another meeting. That, I never heard that before. Yes, it's 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 well, but <laughs> no one's ever said it either. No one's brought it up. So maybe what would be our special consideration for right now while we're working on this? What's the goal for meetings? Because it is difficult to plan life. Um, right. And because August, as an educator, my life's not my own. So that's why I, I couldn't commit to a meeting in August. You're and preaching then, to the choir. Okay, I know. Yeah. And you're Especially the same this way. time of year. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I guess kind of what's our, what's our plan for the next six months? Bob, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, just uh, if it comports with your schedule. Generally, what my understanding was is your goal with the special meetings was to have them on the last Wednesday right. of the month to correspond with when you normally have your uh, regular meetings. Uh, and so in speaking with Greg Ransford, who's going to be the planner working with you going forward to get this process done, it's his understanding that that's when he would need to attend and he had cleared his schedule with that in mind for the last Wednesday of each month. Whether it's a quarterly or a special meeting is when he'll be available to assess you. So that would be the plan, say, for the next six months. We're going to the last Wednesday of the month. Is this in October and January? It's up to the, I mean, if it takes two, three committee meetings. members can make the special meetings, I don't have to do it. So if that's the wish of the committee, then. What's November? That's going to be. It must be the day before Thanksgiving. Is yeah. that, that probably won't work. <laughs> Not that I'm <laughs> <laughs> And I guess it. It's not that asked well. I just would like. How will the decision made? So right now, if if nothing's decided, we're meeting. Our next meeting would be the November, no, the October. Uh, October. Do we want to see what progress we get at each meeting? And then if we so desire, schedule our next 
have a special meeting scheduled a month ahead of time? I think that we do. Because we're not far from into it, we don't have to have some more extra meetings. Does that work for everybody? So, so now let's get this so everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Our next meeting, scheduled meeting, quarterly will be October. In our October meeting then, we will discuss if we need to have a special one in November. Is that what we're gonna do? Because then you get into December, if we do it the last Wednesday, that's gonna be right getting yeah, close to Christmas and New Year's, so. I think October and January, but then we might want to meet in February and March or something. Mm -hmm. It's winter time, and right, right. There's more time. And like I Personally, said, that's we, we can um, we can discuss the night of that meeting a month before. <laughs> so we'll go like if I'm going to type this up. We're going for quarterly meetings right. for sure. Our next meeting is a quarterly meeting. And at that meeting, depending on progress, we would consider November. Right. And if we do or don't meet in November, then we're kind of looking at December or then our next Regular meeting. Regular closing meeting. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got the meeting dates yep. under control. Public comments. It it, same thing. It has varied depending on the date, the meeting, whether they're early in the meeting, later in the meeting. Um, what's the procedure for public comments? I guess uh, <clears throat> we've had it in the beginning in the past, and I felt the last few meetings that we've had at the beginning um, we all, well, it's kind of like you, you're an educator, so you get up early in the morning, I get up early in the morning. If we have it at the beginning, it goes for an hour and a half, we don't get much work done. So that's why I put it at the end of the meeting tonight. If um, everybody wants to sit here and talk, I'll just drink more coffee in the morning, I guess. So. And I'm thinking our bylaws actually had an agenda, didn't it? It does. It has a suggested flow of the meeting that's not binding, and the Planning Commission can change it at any given meeting. but. Um, General order is to be a roll call, approval of the agenda, approval of the minutes, public hearings. So you might take public comment on items that are actually official public hearings, new business, old business, and then brief public comment on any matter. So generally, the default is you're going to take those type of comments after you've completed your role. That would be earlier than like, like take for example, if, if you decide that the, the wind energy ordinance has enough changes that you need to have a new public hearing on something, that would be at the front of the agenda at that time. Then you wouldn't have to have one at the end of the agenda. Uh, no, you still you still, you still have still to have open for general okay. public comments on you know it can be about right. anything. Okay. So do, does the do we want to have a before and after? <laughs> so public hearings tonight, so we should get down to the business of right. the energy ordinance and take comments right. afterwards. Would be my suggestion. Yeah. So a, a general me meeting would be public comment at the end. A public hearing would happen at the front. Right. Public hearing is. Yeah. Public because we're hearing public. from the public, right. and then we usually have a general meeting after public. Right. And then we, we have close those public comments. Close, we, we usually have a public hearing meeting. And close that, and then we open our a regular meeting after. Okay. You're supposed to set the agenda, right? The 
agenda, how, Ron, legally, who is supposed to set the agenda? The chairperson or the secretary or who sets the agenda? Uh, from my understanding, I always thought the chairperson approved the agenda before it was out. That is generally how it's done. The bylaws do not speak uh, directly to this issue, and in that absence, the typical practice is to have the chair prepare the agenda, um, unless sometimes it's have a formal zoning staff or zoning administrator or a manager who might uh, uh, do that. But I don't believe that's your case here, so yes, the default rule would generally be the, uh, the chair produces the agenda in advance, subject to the approval of the full planning commission at the outset of the meeting. For years, did Doug just do it? Doug would, he, him and I would have a conversation. He would get the agenda around and then he would call me if you got any go on the agenda and that was it. So then um, for anyone that might want to present, we've had people present on the topic of wind, marijuana, we had libraries present. Um, how does someone ask to be on the agenda, and how is that approved? From my understanding, they would contact the chair, and then the chair would have to get it approved through the committee. Is that correct, Ron? That's correct. Or majority of the committee, or? Uh... Uh, yeah, and, and you wouldn't do that in advance of the meeting. You would uh, you bring it up at the meeting to decide whether they're allowed to do that. Now, as chair, you have the discretion to uh, put items on the agenda that are actually, of course, associated with pending business. But if somebody just wants to come in and, for example, speak about, do a presentation on wind turbine noise, you certainly don't have to uh, allow that or uh, entertain the request for extra time. That is, a, at this point, a general public comment that ought to be within the three-minute limitation uh, until such time as there is an, another public hearing on Anything else on setting the agenda we need to discuss? Mm -hmm. Official communications, the next item that we need to discuss. Text, emails, phone calls. Because I texted all of you an agenda Friday, and Jack texted me Monday morning that he wondered if I had an agenda, and I said, hey, send it. Um, I had hit send and walked away from messaging, and when Jack asked, and I looked, I had the big red thing that said it didn't go. Um, and I sent it by email. And probably should send it by email. Um, but then what other communications, um, there have been other things that have texted, you know, and questions asked. How, what's considered official? I would say emails. Any suggestions on that? Yeah, just to caution, email is fine. That, that's, of course, the commonplace technology to get things distributed to people now. You, you just need to be careful as a group not to start responding and substantively discussing the issue in response. Because as soon as you hit reply all, you're effectively deliberating on an issue, and that's an Open Meetings Act yep. violation. So it's okay for one-way communication to send out the proposed agenda and everybody receives it. Avoid like a plague to reply all button. That, that, Problems. So, uh, if, if you want adjustments, come up at the meeting and you can vote on amendments to the agenda here when you're at an open meeting. I would recommend opening a new email and typing in the name of who you want because, yeah, yeah, or add the little thing that says undo on your Google mail yeah. that you have like 30 seconds to go. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> um, for email, um, everybody a regular email checker, or would it be good to have a text that just says, please check your email? I think both. I, I get emails on my phone all the time, and I look at them, but a lot of times I, I get them all day long. Either way, text yeah. emails all day long. So then you might have it where I think, I think send an email and then send a text saying to check your emails or something like that. If it's something that's um, very important, Needs to be looked at with an email and then a text. I know Rhonda tries to do that. She'll send out, check your emails. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Okay.
communication is done then. Yep. Working with other entities, I guess I don't understand this one, Cindy. Well, I remember we had Larry who wrote ordinances for us right. when I first started. And then when Larry was retiring, um, Doug talked with him and he recommended Tim. And so then we agreed that Tim would work. And we made that agreement as a PC meeting. But then I think the board the board has to okay it. Has to the okay it too. The board actually hires people. We don't hire them. We can recommend, but the board has to hire them. Come on, if I'm misspeaking myself. No, correct. you're you're correct. The board would have to actually contractually retain someone for that purpose, and, and they have a uh, great rancher now who will be available not only to assist in the further drafting of the wind energy ordinance, but also as to any other planning and zoning matters that arise. And his firm is. Fresh Coast Planning. Fresh Coast. They are out of South Haven, is it? Grand Haven. Grand Haven. And that's what you said his name is Greg. Greg Rancher. And he's been hired and he's not here? Yeah, it was on too short a notice for him to make this meeting, but he will be at every subsequent meeting um, that the wind energy is, uh, ordinance is worked on rather than me. Uh, once we get kind of the process going here, I'm trying to serve as a transition to get the process started, but it'll be more effective and cost effective for him to assist you going forward with the process. Okay. All set on that? Mm -hmm. Roles and expectation, chair, vice chair, secretary, Liaison to the board. I think it's pretty well spelled out in the bylaws. Okay. Does it describe all three? Because I kind of I've looked at it, but. Yes. It gives the roles of the chairperson, vice chair, and secretary. Liaison for the Township Board on there? Is that a role that's. That is what the Board appointee and planning commission automatically serves. Okay. So, to be just clear, I guess, for my position, Secretary, um, Jack, you're going to be doing the agenda. Does the agenda have to be posted so many hours, days before a meeting? I was, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, I thought it was 18 hours. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the, the, what needs to be posted before a meeting is a notice of the meeting. There's no requirement that the agenda actually be posted. Now, if you're using the agenda as your notice of the meeting, that is also fine. If it's a special meeting, it has to be posted at least 18 hours in advance. Your regular quarterly meeting should be posted year-round on um, at the township hall at the place where you normally post your meeting. Okay. So the actually the agenda. Has if you're using the agenda for that, that's fine. Okay. But all you need is a notice that just says a date, time, and place, and you can post that. That's sufficient. Okay. Okay. So does it have to say quarterly or special meeting or anything? If it's special meeting, it does need to identify that it is special. And that is 18 days. 18 hours. Or 18 hour shows. And then the minutes are within rough draft meeting, okay? And then they're subject to approval at the next regular meeting. So, for example, tonight you could approve your last regular meeting if you wanted, but you don't have to do that until your next regular meeting. Cindy was so kind, she did pass them off to us, but it's like I told her we didn't have to send them tonight. And then the final minutes have to be posted again? Uh, they don't have to be posted at, at all. They just need to be publicly okay. available. By a certain time? Yeah, yes, and uh, I apologize. I don't know the exact date on that offhand. I think it's within eight days, but uh, if you want me to verify that, I'll need to look up the other meeting on that. I don't have that committed to memory. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, question for Ron. Uh, Ron, on 
the subject of chair, does the chair vote on every single matter or just on a tie? They vote, they have full voting rights as any other man, member. Second question, if anyone on this board or another board has any uh, ties to a subject that can financially uh, help their family in the future, does that, should they sustain on their vote or? Yes, the, the, the bylaws again have uh, rules on conflict of interest, which impose requirements for uh, if you have a conflict to identify it and to disclose it, and uh, if it is a conflict, to recuse yourself from uh, the discussion you vote on the matter. Does that also apply if it's after the fact? Uh, no. Uh, uh, so we're not uh, hypothetical about it. I mean, conceivably, any of you could sign a lease in the future energy project if one were to happen. The mere possibility of that does not disqualify it. Uh, now, if it had reached some stage where you've got preliminary agreements with the wind energy company where it's understood you're going to execute a lease at such time when uh, an ordinance is approved, that probably rises to the level of a conflict where you should recuse yourself. But if you're just generally interested, like any landowner might be, you might be a, a, a farmer who has large tracts of land and are an obvious target for that type of arrangement if this type of project goes forward. That in itself does not require recusal. Thank you. <clears throat> is y'all set on, on that yep. uh, decision making? And I guess this is, we covered a little bit of this with the idea of not reply all on the email because that would be, um, same thing with text, phone calls. You know, if if decisions are made, how do we protect ourselves from not being going against the Open Meeting Act? Well, like I said, let the reply all button be your enemy. Uh, I, I give a, a speech period on the Open Meetings Act where I put up PowerPoint slides that has a little thing that says, you know. Little children and animals die every time you hit reply all. As a warning that you just shouldn't do it as a member of a public body. Um, it's just walking into home a violation. So email is great for the one-way communications of here's the agenda, here's the agenda packet, here's what we're going to discuss, and you leave it at that. Um, if you need to discuss any of the items, you wait until the meeting to discuss it. So do not use reply all. That's Can I? as simple as it gets, and you'll avoid those violations. And I think I brought it to your attention one time, Ron, that there was four PC members at a regular township board meeting. And from what I got from you, as long as we didn't get off in the corner and have a sidebar talking about some PC item, four of us could be in the same room at the same meeting. And stuff. Yes, that, that's what you need to avoid, is if you've got a quorum in the same room at any time, as soon as you start talking to each other about a matter of public policy, then it's a meeting, and if you haven't properly noticed it, it's a planning commission meeting, then it's an OMA violation. So uh, that said, you don't forfeit your right as a planning commission member to speak as any other member of the public. It's when you engage in this two-way exchange, you have four, you know, quorum talking to each other, that's not a problem. And I know once, Jack, you sent out a text and said, please don't respond all to this text, right. but let me know about a date or something. I think that was probably August week. Yeah. So um, is there an issue at all with one-way communication that it's one way here, and then it's one way here, and then it's one way here? Not for setting meeting dates. If he, if, I mean, it, topics. Yeah, it, it can be if, if you're doing it purposely violate the open meeting that you could get engage in small sub quorum groups with the idea with the idea of evading the requirements of the open meeting back that's a violation but these incidental one ways where Jack sends out an email saying hey is this date okay and seven six people independently respond to him saying well that doesn't work for me this day's better that's fine Let's move into the old business now, which is going to be the wind energy systems, uh, the draft that Ron has brought with him. Uh, he emailed it to everyone yesterday. Um, some of us, like me, didn't print it out, but you brought five copies.
and so um, we can share. I, Pat, I can share. Rick, you want to send me or Cindy? Have you got a copy? No, I don't have a copy. I mean, I have a copy to share with Rick. Okay. Ron, do you want to take over and go over what we've got here? And um, to the public out here, <clears throat> this is the first time that the PC has actually seen these documents, so. I know a lot of you are probably wondering um, what and when you will be able to see them. After talking with Ron at the beginning of the meeting, probably as soon as Rhonda can get it out, it will be out on, should be out maybe tomorrow. Is that what we're trying to get at? Oh, we'll get out tomorrow? <laughs> no, Rhonda can get Rhonda. this stuff out. Oh, yeah. It, it's, as soon uh, as Rhonda can get it out, it will be out for the public. Yeah, anybody could request a copy right now. It's it's a publicly available document under the Freedom of Information Act, so anybody can come in and request copies. Okay, but uh, did you know she's in tomorrow? Right? She is not. Not okay. until next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. Okay, Ron, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, my uh, expectation tonight is that this will be more by way of an introduction and giving you an idea of the, the overall content of the documents you have in front of you. Given that you all just received them yesterday, I don't expect a whole lot of substantive discussion tonight except for maybe on some very high level issues that will help drive the process forward. But by way of some background, I, I've been working, as you know, with uh, Rob Eggers at the Spicer Group and some of his associates to take the so-called Citizens Ordinance and uh, improve it for adoption by the township. With uh, two principal goals in mind, the overriding goal to be uh, maximally protective of the health, safety, and welfare of township residents uh, if a wind turbine project is established in the townships, but doing so in a way that also uh, meets the, uh, the uh, opposing goal, if you will, of making sure it is not so unreasonable uh, or exclusionary so as to unduly expose the township to uh, risk of being sued over the ordinance. Again, on the ground that it either totally excludes wind turbines or effectively excludes them or that its provisions are substantively unreasonable. So the Spicer Group was working on that with that in mind that it was going to be a very conservative ordinance that will admittedly make it difficult for wind energy, but at the same time not so difficult that it will be subject to legal challenge. That's the line they were trying to walk here. Um, so with that in mind, let me uh, describe the, uh, the process that the Spicer Group used uh, and the documents that were sent to you yesterday. There was four of them. Um, the first